thank the organizers for this possibility. They invited me to have this, uh, say, longer lecture, and uh, I appreciate it very much. Uh, thank you once more. As you can see, this is also my first uh, online conference. And as you can see, this left arrow here, it means that Barcelona is the heart of our conference. But now I am sitting in Prague. So I'm speaking from Prague, which is strange and new phenomenon. I hope it is, it is the, uh, <laughs> it is only, it will not be in future so often. So it's exceptional situation and, and uh, uh, yes, new experience. So uh, my talk is based on four papers. Uh, first one is very old from 30 years ago. I, I have written, I had written the paper about measure preserving functions and I studied uh, differentiability of such functions and try to prove some new information. Uh, recently in 2020 with uh, my co-author Serge Trubetskoy, we published uh, in nonlinearity uh, paper about more dynamical properties of interval maps preserving the Lebesgue measure. And uh, uh, last half year, I think, uh, we collaborate with uh, Jernay Cinch and with Piotr Oprocha together with uh, Serge Trubetskoy and try to, to, to get new results about uh, Lebesgue measure preserving interval maps and also Lebesgue measure preserving circle maps. So we were successful. These are papers third and fourth. Uh, third one is already submitted and uh, uh, fourth is also finished now, so will be submitted, I hope, this week or next one, next week. So uh, uh, our basic context. In, at first I will speak about interval maps. Our basic context is uh, simply continuous interval maps preserving the limit measure, which means it is written here, whenever you take Borel set, measurable set, Borel set, uh, then uh, image or this set and the, its pre-image has the same Lebesgue measure. And as I already mentioned, uh, uh, we were interested, I was interested and uh, later we were interested both in differentiability and also dynamical properties of such maps. Of course, uh, to, to build a space, we need some, some metric on C lambda i, which is, as you can expect, the, the metric of uniform convergence. And uh, with this metric, C lambda i is, of course, a complete, met complete metric space. So uh, we can consider such notions as, as uh, uh, residual sets, sets of second category, uh, sets of first category. And uh, as it is well known, we can speak about typical properties in, of maps in such space, which means that uh, uh, some p property P is typical if the set of all maps with this property is residual in C lambda I rho. And also equivalently, we will speak about uh, generic maps, which means that uh, uh, the set of, uh, of uh, maps bearing a typical property. Uh, sorry, once more. <laughs> uh, some property is generic if, if the set of, uh, of maps, some, uh, some maps are generic some map is generic if, if a property is typical. It is bearing, it is bearing. Okay, sorry. Uh, maybe to uh, explain my and our motivation. Uh, for us, C lambda i is a canonical, a canonical space for interval maps, at least for those with dense set of peric points. This is uh, 
explained in this remark that uh, three conditions are equivalent. Uh, first one is that uh, F has a dense set of periodic points. Uh, second condition is that uh, F preserves, preserves a non-atomic probability measure mu with full support. And uh, second condition says that uh, there exists a homeomorphism H of I uh, such that the corresponding conjugacy is from C lambda I. This is well known more or less a consequence of several, several uh, say, basic results from internal dynamics. Uh, of course, uh, to mention why, uh, why one and two or one and third condition are equivalent. Uh, for example, if you have Poincare recurrence theorem and you know that F uh, uh, has an invariant measure with full support, it means that uh, by Poincare recurrence theorem that uh, the set of recurrence uh, points is dense, but we know on the interval, it was proved by Coven and Henlund, that, uh, that uh, the closure of recurrent points and uh, periodic points is the same. So it means that periodic points have to be, have to be dense in the whole interval. And if you would like to, to define, say, invariant measure for a map with dense set of periodic points, then uh, you can use results of uh, Barch and Martin describing uh, dynamics of, of a map with dense set of periodic points. And uh, you quite easily obtain that such a map has to have an invariant measure with full support. I mean, non-atomic, of course, non-atomic probability measure with full support. And the third property that it is equivalent to the second one is quite, quite obvious. If you use age defined by, by invariant measure mu as a, say, distribution function of it, or then, then lambda is then, if I am right uh, as a push forward of mu uh, and, and uh, we obtain this conjugacy written as a third condition. So it means that if we study C lambda i, then uh, we in fact study much bigger set of maps. And uh, if we are able to show some say topological, even top typical properties in C lambda i, we very often can show them or it implied that uh, it, Im it implies that we prove them also in some mu i with mu uh, an anatomic probability measure with full support, or simply for some maps with dense set of periodic points. So it is our motivation and also explanation why uh, we assume C lambda i is an interesting space. Uh, by the way, simply it is very natural space of maps preserving the most natural, absolutely continuous invariant measure with respect to itself. So uh, in, in, in the second paper with Serge Trubetskoy uh, published last year, we proved some, I would say, basic information on uh, on uh, uh, dynamical properties of uh, maps from C lambda i. We proved that uh, a typical map is weakly mixing with respect to lambda is Leo, which was already defined uh, for any open non-empty subset of i, there exists some positive integer n such that n's iterate of this open set is the whole interval. Uh, as a consequence, typical map satisfies the periodic specification property, has infinite topological entropy, which was more or less folklore, well known. And uh, we've taken from paper of Schmeling and Winkler uh, information that typical map in C lambda i has its graph of Hausdorff dimension equal to lower box dimension equal to one and upper box dimension equal to two. To mention my old results, more, uh, sorry.
ah yes my older results uh, more concentrated on novel differentiability or differentiability in c lambda i uh, let's take another measure not lambda some probability non-atomic probability measure mu again with the full support and uh, then uh, I was able to prove that uh, in C lambda I, typical map has a not point at mu almost every point, which means something like uh, not point is a point where upper extremal derivatives, one-sided extremal derivatives are plus infinity and lower extremal derivatives are minus infinity. It means uh, both uh, uh, all four, uh, derivatives are infinite, upper R plus infinite and uh, plus infinity and, and lower R minus infinity. So uh, not only for lambda, mu can be taken some, of course, lambda, but uh, for any fixed a priori given measure mu, if you consider as the set of maps with, uh, uh, with not points, on, mu almost everywhere that such set is uh, residual in C lambda I, and uh, as a consequence, you can obtain that uh, typical maps in C lambda i for a given, a priori given mu, uh, maps at least one mu null sets uh, onto the whole i. And even that uh, uh, if you consider lambda and mu independent for lambda equal to mu, is, it is clear, but for lambda and mu independent, and you consider level sets of typical maps, then they, they are uh, mu null sets. Uh, that means uh, uh, very small, independently of lambda with respect to some mu. So because we know that we can intersect uh, countably many residual sets to obtain residual set, uh, we would like to list the countably many of typical properties and consider the intersection and to obtain a fine or some, some uh, attractive representative of typicality of typical properties is C lambda i. We don't have countably many of them. We have only finitely many of them. I don't know, I don't know how many. There is five, so eight we have. So far we have eight typical properties. Of course, we can consider maps typical maps uh, bearing all these five, property, five proper properties. Uh, and we tried in, in last papers, more recent papers, we tried to, to extend this list of typical properties. So uh, uh, first of all, we tried to, to say more about uh, structure and cardinalities of periodic points of given period of or of all periodic points uh, for a given map from C lambda i. So as usual, here is some, some notation. Uh, this is C lambda, it should be some bracket. We were able to provide general uh, answer and we denote per FK is the set of all periodic points of period K minimal period K, uh, fixed FK is uh, explained here. This is the set of all peri periodic points of period L where L divides K and uh, per F as usual is the set of all periodic points. And we will consider lovables, upper box and household dimensions. And we were able to prove in our recent paper the following, if we consider uh, C lambda i, then generic map from, from F, typical property, is that uh, this set fix F k is a Cantor set. The same is true for uh, pair F k. And uh, if we consider uh, dimensions of those sets, then uh, fix F k has house of dimension and lower box dimension zero. And uh, uh, 
that means a subset has the same properties. And if we consider a upper box dimension for typical map F, then upper box dimension of per FK is one, therefore, of course, big, bigger set has the same upper box dimension and uh, outer dimension of the set of all peric points is zero because it is uh, stable, how to say, on, on a countable union as a consequence of, of the property three, which box dimension is not, of course. So uh, these are our results. We have a new item in our list of typical properties. And we also uh, are able to, uh, to prove, to use similar methods and to prove analogous theorem in a CI without lambda. That means in the space of continuous function interval maps uh, equipped by the metric of uniform convergence. And uh, uh, I will speak about uh, cycle maps in more details later, but, but uh, let me mention now in relation to our result about structure of periodic points and their out of dimension that, that uh, if we denote by this symbol, the set of uh, sec of all cycle maps of degree D uh, preserving Lebesgue measure, here is written tilde lambda because by tilde lambda we denote uh, normalized Lebesgue measure on S1, the unit cycle. Then we are able to prove very similar or analogous result to this for, uh, for maps for maps from C tilde lambda D S1. For D different from one. For D equal to one, situation is more delicate. We don't, we are able to prove uh, also how to say complete information, but uh, I am not going to speak about this now. Let me uh, jump a little bit because here I have some. Using our theorem about structure of periodic points, we were able to prove in C lambda i quite, uh, I think, nice observation, surprising for me, at least for me, which is the following. Uh, of course, uh, in C lambda i, typical map is weakly mixing. In particular, it is ergodic. So the set of generic points of the Lebesgue measure is of the full measure is equal to one. So if we consider measure of periodic points, it is zero, of course, because periodic points are not the generic points of invariant Lebesgue measure. But despite this fact, uh, it is not so rare and uh, exceptional to have very extremal behavior in C lambda i with respect to periodic points and their Lebesgue measures. You can see if we consider Leo maps in C lambda i whose periodic points have full Lebesgue measure and whose periodic points of period K have positive measure for each K. So such a set is dense in C lambda I. And uh, in fact, it is a quite nice consequence of our structure theorem describing behavior of periodic points of typical maps in C lambda I. Why? Let me briefly mention ingredients. Why it is true. Okay, we know that low maps, I'm here now, 
we know that low maps are uh, typical. The property to be low is typical. And again, at the same time, the property that for each K, the set of periodic points of minimal period K is a Cantor set. It is also a typical property. So uh, we have typical property to be low and at the same time have Cantor sets uh, of periodic points. And uh, in particular, such maps are dense in C, C lambda I. Each such, each such map, as we've seen already, has a periodic specification, specification property. Hence, it is uh, uh, well known results of Sigmund. Uh, if you consider CO measures, F invariant CO measures, which is uh, measures sitting on closed orbits, that mean on periodic orbits, ergodic one on one periodic orbit, then uh, uh, these measures approximate the Lebesgue measure in the weak star topology. Uh, I hope I mentioned this is result of Sigmund. And uh, uh, so we can approximate for some big K, we can approximate Lebesgue measure for any epsilon a priori given, we can approximate Lebesgue measure by some CO measure sitting on one periodic orbit, but per FK, say that K is the big uh, large number and per FK is, does not have uh, isolated points. That means our point, our periodic orbit is not isolated. And instead of, those, of this orbit, we can take say neighborhood of this orbit in a counter set per FK, that means uh, some counter set they gi given by portions of original counter set per FK. And on that counter set, we can define, we can consider non-atomic non probability measure, which is uh, uh, also very close to Lebesgue measure, to the original Lebesgue measure. And this we can do for infinitely many case arbitrarily large. So we obtain countably many non-atomic probability measures sitting on counter sets very close to Lebesgue measure and we can consider their infinite convex combination which gives us a new non-atomic measure mu which approximates lambda very well which measures periodic points by one, say coefficients of this, of this uh, convex combination are one over two power k. And uh, moreover, uh, f f f again, by some, by some uh, uh, usual uh, method, we can transform this measure mu, which is not Lebesgue measure, it is different measure, we can, and homomorphism given by mu, we can transform uh, by conjugacy by this homomorphism, our original map to new map with full, uh, with, with periodic points of full measure, Lebesgue measure. But uh, since homomorphism was very close to uh, identity, mu was very close to lambda, we obtain a map which uh, uh, is still close to original, uh, original uh, map we start with, and so we know that uh, arbitrarily, arbitrarily close to fixed map from C lambda i, we found a map with, uh, with uh, uh, full set of periodic points with respect to Lebesgue. So I'm sorry it was briefly description of this. I like the, this result as a, as a surprising for me at least. Okay, so let me go back. So it was about periodic structure, one new item in our list of typical properties. And second one is, uh, as uh, the title says, uh, about shadowing property. So uh, we uh, have studied shadowing property 
and also limit shadowing property or S, li S limit shadowing property in the context of C lambda i. Uh, let me start by several definitions. Uh, what does it mean for delta positive that some sequence, subsequence of i is a delta pseudo orbit? Uh, it simply means for a fixed f, of course, uh, it simply means that that image of x sub n and x n plus one are a part less than delta for each n non negative positive integer, uh, non negative integer, and uh, a pseudo delta a periodic delta pseudo orbit is a delta pseudo orbit such that this sequence x sub n is periodic. And uh, also we can speak, we will use the notion of asymptotic pseudo orbit, which means that uh, if we again uh, check uh, distance between image of X sub n and of X n plus one, then this distance is going to zero as it is written here, this asymptotic pseudo orbit. And uh, we also have, can have the situation where some delta pseudo orbit is an asymptotic pseudo orbit. And then we simply speak about asymptotic delta pseudo orbit. So using this notion, we can define uh, three or four shadowing properties. First one is very uh, well known shadowing property, which says that, uh, again, F is fixed map of CI, uh, which says that uh, whenever you take epsilon positive, then there exists positive delta, uh, such that uh, for each delta pseudo orbit, which is not orbit, it is only delta pseudo orbit, we can find an orbit, a point and its orbit, such that Y is epsilon traced Epsilon traced by by orbit of x, which is uh, philosophically very interesting. Uh, some some uh, object which is not orbit is traced by real orbit, which is very interesting from computational point of view, for example. And uh, here here are some variation variations of of this A definition. For example, we can speak about periodic shadowing property if uh, whenever you take positive epsilon and uh, you uh, have, okay, whenever you take positive epsilon, then there exists positive delta such that whenever you take delta periodic delta pseudo orbit, periodic delta pseudo orbit, that means as a periodic sequence, then a uh, real orbit which traced y is periodic. It is a, an orbit of a periodic point, okay? And uh, we will also speak about, about uh, limit shadowing. What does it mean? So uh, here was defined asymptotic pseudo orbit. So limit shadowing means that uh, if you take asymptotic pseudo orbit, whenever you take asymptotic pseudo orbit, then uh, there exists a P from I such that its orbit approximate asymptotic pseudo orbit in this sense. That means distance between n state of P and uh, X sub n is going to zero again. And we have even a fourth definition, which says that uh, uh, it is called S limit shadowing. And it means it is some, some uh, gluing together shadowing and limit shadowing, but in a, a one very special direction, which means that if you have a system, it can be which is shadowing and which is limit shadowing and you for a given uh, epsilon, you will uh, try to find uh, an, a point, a point which traces, epsilon traces uh, mm, delta pseudo orbit or limit or uh, asymptotic pseudo orbit, 
uh, these two points can be different. But sometimes in more special systems, uh, both trajectories, delta pseudo orbit and asymptotic pseudo orbit can be approximated by the same point. And this is situation uh, called uh, S-limit shadowing, which is written in some uh, formally in some using some formalism here. So uh, uh, shadowing and periodic shadowing, uh, of course, it's, I would say, well known, maybe not so uh, known are limit shadowing and S limit shadowing, uh, but uh, there are some related results. Kulchitsky, uh, Kvetniak and Oprocha in 2014 proved interesting result uh, related to our notions that uh, transitive maps with limit shadowing uh, property have also shadowing property in general, in general context. And uh, this is what I said already, that uh, if, if you consider a system and you know that it is uh, uh, limit shadowing and uh, uh, shadowing, it does not mean delta, that for each delta pseudo orbit and asymptotic pseudo orbit, you can find the same point tracing, which epsilon traces uh, both, the, both trajectories or orbits. So, uh, by the way, uh, I would like to mention that uh, uh, there is quite rich literature about all these notions about uh, volume preserving maps, not in the context of C lambda i or C tilde lambda s1, but uh, on manifolds and, and uh, uh, also one dimensional, one dimensional uh, continua with, uh, with, in, in connection to shadowing properties, but I'm not speaking uh, about these all references, but in our papers, uh, they, are, they are quite uh, extensively uh, referred and uh, you can find them there. So, uh, in uh, C lambda i, concerning shadowing properties, we were able to prove the following theorem, which is written down. Shadowing and periodic shadowing are generic properties for maps from C lambda i. And uh, let me say now, that we were trying to prove also uh, genericity of limit shadowing or even estimate shadowing, but we were not able. We don't know how to do it. There are some technical problems. And in fact, we are not sure that it is the case. Uh, I will uh, comment it later. So this is new item, new property on our list of typical properties in the context of C lambda i. And as a byproduct, when we try to find new generic property, typical properties, generic maps, we've also obtained a list of properties which are dense in C lambda i. For example, uh, we were investigated. Uh, uh, we were investigating measure, measure theoretical entropy with respect to lambda in C lambda i, and uh, finally we obtained that uh, the following results: that for every C positive real number and uh, P A M lambda i means uh, piecewise affine piecewise affine Markov maps preserving lambdas. This is a subset of C lambda i, and this index enter equal to C means that uh, these are piecewise affine Markov maps preserving Lebesgue measure such that their measure, uh, measure theoretical entropy with respect to lambda equals to C. 
and we found that for each C from zero infinity, this set is dense in C lambda I. It is also true, let me mention it directly, it is also true if this entropy is infinite, measure theoretical entropy. It is also dense in C lambda I, but we don't know if, uh, for example, for some fixed C, uh, such maps are generic, or uh, of course then they wouldn't be piecewise affine Markov, uh, or uh, for infinity, if uh, this set, these are not piecewise affine Markov with infinite entropy, metric entropy, but, uh, but uh, this we don't know if this, these maps are generic with infinite metric entropy. So uh, uh, these are in fact open questions, unsolved problems. And also we don't know, I've mentioned it already, if uh, the property to have, to, to have as limit shadowing property, we know that it is dense in, in C lambda i, we were able to show it, it is dense, but we don't know if it is a typical property, if such map is generic, which has S limit shadowing property. So that's another question still open, Generity, genericity of S limit shadowing in C lambda i. And uh, there are other, uh, several other interesting sets which are dense in C lambda i, but uh, which are not uh, for sure, it cannot be uh, residual. For example, it is also proved in our paper, third one, uh, if we consider not weakly, but not weakly mixing maps with respect to lambda in C lambda i, but strongly mixing maps with respect to lambda, then this set is uh, uh, dense, but of the first category. And uh, if you consider, uh, this is, I mentioned in details, in fact, uh, the set of low maps whose periodic points have full Lebesgue measure and whose periodic points of period K have positive measure for each K, for each period, fixed period, then this set is also dense but of the first category because uh, typical properties to be weakly mixing. So periodic points have measure zero. And uh, also nice dense property in C lambda i is that the set of Bezikovich maps in C lambda i is dense in C lambda i. Uh, this set is also of the first category. Bezikovich map is a map which does not have any derivative finite or infinite one-sided. Uh, so these are maps extremal without derivatives. Uh, they create a dense subset of C lambda i, but of the first category, this is a consequence of one results of Sachs. And we don't know what is their topological entropy. So let me say, fix the Bezikovich map in C lambda i, preserving Lebesgue measure, and question is, can its topological entropy be finite? I don't know. Ah, this I already mentioned. So uh, let me introduce or present the results from the last paper, fourth one. Uh, as I've said already, a lambda tilde lambda denote, denotes normalized Lebesgue measure on S1. And uh, by C tilde lambda S1, we consider, we denote uh, uh, the set of all in cycle maps preserving Lebesgue measure. And this set with, we uh, endowed with topology of uniform convergence. Then we obtain again a complete metric space and uh, in this context, let me re recall that, that uh, in the context of C lambda i, we were not able to show that 
typical properties to, to have uh, limit uh, shadowing property or S limit shadowing property. And surprisingly, uh, in, in C tilde lambda S1, we were able to, to prove it. There are some technical reasons why the proof from the cycle cannot be used on the interval, but simply the S limit shadowing, it is our say, main, main theorem of this paper, the S limit shadowing property is generic in C tilde lambda S1. And in fact, uh, uh, of course, the limit shadowing, which is uh, say special, which is a consequence or, or weaker notion, uh, the limit shadowing property is also generic in C tilde lambda S1. So, uh, I have quite unpleasant task now, which is to comment the proof of this rather technical, I mean, of the main theorem. Of the main theorem. And I, I, I would like to try to do it. So uh, let me mention main ingredients of the proof. So uh, what we would like to do We have some map, circle map, or, or it's representative, that means uh, lifting or modulo one lifting. And we consider some positive epsilon. And uh, for this epsilon, we consider some finite partition of say the cycle. And uh, this finite partition has some subdivision. Each element of this partition has some subdivision to five sets. In this sense, this is a symbol of, of the arc, say, on the cycle. And uh, covering properties of these arts, of these parts, L1, L2, M, R2, R1, are very special. And they satisfy very general set of conditions, which is given here. So let me be, uh, repeat the whole story very briefly, but uh, uh, once more, we have some we have some uh, map from cycle map from C tilde lambda S one, and we perturb it in such a way on some very fine partition, finite one, to have on each element of this partition this shape of its graph. And what is our goal? Our goal is to fulfill this five condition, these five conditions, which are uh, very clever, but uh, I am not going to explain that, them that here because it would be really too technical. But uh, let me say these are conditions that uh, enable us to realize the following procedure. If we take some tau, which is very close to pertube delta, uh, theta, sorry, theta was uh, symbolically described here. So if we take some tau, which is very close to theta, then tau inherits covering properties of theta. And it means for us that if we take some for given delta, sorry, for a given epsilon, but sufficiently small delta, if we take some delta pseudo orbit for tau, then we can find elements of our partition and subset of these of those elements, I mean subsets chosen from these L's, R's and M, but in fact leftmost L or right, rightmost R, in such a way that our sequence pseudo orbit lies in each element of it 
lies in the chosen element of partition, and uh, these chosen sets, ALS, ELS and ARS, have these covering properties. Because our partition has a very small norm with respect to epsilon, which is a priori given, it in fact immediately means by this covering property, we can consider this intersection, which is non empty. And if we take Z from this intersection, then such a Z is epsilon tracing original pseudo delta pseudo orbit X. So that's easy case, what it marks, easy case when you consider only shadowing property. But when we consider limit shadowing property or even S limit shadowing property, our situation is more complicated because uh, we don't need to work uh, not only with one epsilon, but the sequence of epsilons, we assume some asymptotic uh, pseudo orbit and uh, we consider some sequence, decrease in sequence of positive epsilons and we also consider uh, some sequence of partitions, finite partitions with norms less than epsilon i and for each element of each partition we consider analogous uh, subdivisions of elements of them and now we would like to realize more or less analogous scenario as we used above for shadowing property here. But uh, it is more complicated. Why? This is uh, more or less repetition of the previous relation. We choose X sub S from some element of N I's partition. This is also analogous it means that some finite part of our asymptotic uh, pseudo orbit is taken from uh, element of some partition and for each this element we choose left leftmost or rightmost uh, element of subdivision but we have third also third condition which uh, enable us to switch between levels that means if uh, we have uh, this uh, choice for some partition Q power Ni, then after some time, which is given by some sequence of positive integers, we need to switch to new partition, which is a refinement of the previous one, and which is also monotone partition for some perturbation thetas N, Ni, and to still have this covering property, that means that uh, new image of, of, uh, of uh, older element of our partition is uh, or subdivision uh, is still covers, tau covers a new element of our partition. And it's uh, a quite, uh, quite a technical part of our proof. So if I have little time yet, so I would like to no, sorry. It is here. Yes, here. So uh, let me recall, we need, no, it is not, okay. See, see. Here, okay. Here are some pictures I would like to show it to you. Yes. So, in fact, uh, we would like to, to, to construct these partitions and 10 set of maps such that we can fulfill all these conditions. It means, first of all, to produce some, some method how to control that uh, we have 10 set of maps in C lambda S1 the lambda S1, but we consider the point of discontinuities of derivatives. That means uh, turning points and also where slope for piecewise affine maps where slope is, uh, is not continuous. And uh, uh, 
For this, we produced, we developed technical MR, which is uh, saying uh, very briefly the following. If you take a map such that X coordinates of turning points are from Q pi. Q pi is a pi uh, shifted Q, the set of rational points. Q shifted by pi. So if you have X coordinates uh, of turning points from Q pi, that means these are irrational numbers, but the difference between them are rational, this map does not preserve Lebesgue measure. Maybe I should be here. And if you define, I think by obvious method, this is F I described, X coordinates are from Q, Pi coordinates, uh, Y coordinates are from, from uh, Q. For this composition, if you define H as a, uh, of X as a Lebesgue measure of this pre image, and H of zero is zero, then this composition will have very nice property that uh, its turning points and point of discontinuity, discontinuity of uh, derivative is from Q pi, but uh, images of these points are from Q. And this is very important for us. We can construct sufficiently, say, rich set of such maps and we can use them to, to define all these perturbations and uh, all these, all these uh, refinements, new uh, partitions, and to obtain still uh, sufficiently free space for new and new constructions, as I tried to explain during my presentation, which is here. So, thank you for your attention. Okay, Joseph, thank you very much for your nice presentation. We have